now um, we will have Daniel again, um, whom you still remember from earlier today. Daniel is going to talk about the uh, reporting and investigation issues in Osmocom, which for us uh, as the developers, it always seems so clear how people should report issues, but then in reality, the issue reports always or mostly lack a lot of important information. Um, and uh, let's try to uh, basically um, be proactive and, and, and try to explain what we as developers would like to see in terms of issue reports. Thanks. Yes. Um, hi, I'm still Daniel. I still have a cold, so uh, bear with me. Um, in general, well, before we get into specifics, um, uh, issue report or bug report always should be as complete as possible with all the different um, yeah environmental factors that may may affect it. So, in general, yeah, you probably all know that. Um, try to be as complete as possible. This talk will focus on how you can achieve being as complete as possible inside the Osmocom stack. So, um, first of all, we have a logging infrastructure in all Osmocom projects. It's in libosmocore. And um, it can be configured uh, in most every project. The exception is um, open GGSN which uh, is not Osmo GGSN, so it doesn't support that. Um, <clears throat> you have logging. Uh, for logging, you have different destinations. So you can log to standard error if you, you're just running your service and want to see what's happening. Um, you can log into a file, so it stays there a little bit longer. And um, you can also log to syslog, so you can uh, um, have some central logging mechanism and uh, pick the logs up from there. Maybe a very short interruption. <coughs> I don't like to do that, but uh, it's also the standard error is also very useful in the context of systemd, for example, right? Because then systemd yes. starts the process and you get the standard error into the regular uh, logging and uh, uh, framework of, of systemd, and that's actually quite handy. True. Um, for logging, um, not general logging, but if you want to debug specific issues, you can also filter by IMSI for, for Osmo NITB. And so where it makes sense, you can have, we have filters, so you can, um, filter everything, which means pass everything f through. That's, um, sort of misconception that many newcomers uh, fall into. So logging filter all one means don't filter everything out, but filter everything in. Um, that's too <laughs> I mean, would be too easy otherwise. Uh, so you don't have to filter all, but you can also filter by IMSI. So filter IMSI, and then the IMSI name will give you only the messages that are associated with a certain subscriber. Um, of course, on some layers, that doesn't make sense and won't... Uh, yield you the correct logging messages. Um, there's colorization. Uh, so we have different logging categories, um, which are colored differently. You can turn on colorization, uh, turn it on and off. Also when logging to a file, which is quite um, handy if you view it with a text viewer that supports um, highlighting, you can always just um, yeah make out the, the important bits where uh, what do we have? Yellow, I think, is mobility management, or white is SMS uh, level. So that's quite nice to have. There's timestamps. Uh, we support two different um, timestamps, just uh, second granularity, and we also support extended timestamps, which have, um, I don't remember if it's micro or nano or femtosecond, but it's uh, basically... Uh, has enough resolution so you can uh, tie that to some issues that you're seeing that are happening quite fast. For example, if you're looking into Wireshark trace, um, I mean, if the clocks are synchronized between the, the PC doing the, the tracing and the one doing the logging, then that becomes quite good. Yes, we have different log levels for different logging categories. So you can log into different categories. I already mentioned some um, earlier. 
and you have different log levels. So the order of in order of verbosity, uh, the most verbose is uh, debug. Then you have info, notice, error, and fatal. I so fatal will usually, as it says, um, then also end the process. Um, debug can be used for debugging. Um, then uh, yeah, the ones in between. <coughs> so on the the lower layer, you see how, or you can see how the config uh, would look like. So Harold already um, showed and went through it in his in his first talk. Um, yeah, already said everything. There is one thing: logging print category one, which was is a more or less recent addition. Well, not too recent, but it also hasn't been there from the start. Um, it will show you if you look at some logging lines here. Uh, we have the category in easily parsable um, number format, and if you say logging print category one, then in addition to this rememberable number, you will also have the actual category here. As, um, so it's probably easier if you don't have colors. If you have colors, you will probably know if, um, after a while which is which anyway, but here you can see that's um, radio signaling um, layer, um, RLL, MM, uh, mobility management, and so on. So it will print the different categories, followed by the file that the log statement was introduced and followed by the line number. So if you want to dig into the code, um, enable logging, then that'll allow you to, <coughs> to see where the line came and uh, yeah, investigate further. Um, after that, uh, here we have certain primitives to, um, so if, if a log message is associated with um, a TRX or an, an L channel, logical channel, then um, we have certain primitives to print info for that as well. So you can easily see that uh, all these messages actually belong to or less the same conversation. <laughs> so time slot zero, sub slot zero, which is the first uh, SDCCH um, on there. <laughs> and yes, then the message activated channel of the ACK is returned, establish indication, and then from the mobility management at some point af after the channel was activated, um, subscriber is attached. <laughs> Okay, so um, that was logging. Now, just a brief introduction into the VTY interface. Uh, which one or who of you has used the VTY interface before? Okay. Has? Uh, has. has, yes. <laughs> okay, it's not all. Okay, so um, yes, it's a human interface via Telnet, so you connect through Telnet and then you can um, do stuff. So you can configure the service on the fly and you can look at status information, also manipulate some things. It's basically up to whichever program implements the VTY interface, what commands it wants to um, provide. The nice thing with VTY, as has been said before, is it has auto-completion via tab. So if you don't know anything, what you should do, you just hit tab and it'll show you um, what commands can come next. Or the question mark will have an annotated help, so it will also show you um, a brief summary of the commands, which uh, basically if you've seen the documentation of the VTY, which is generated automatically, then that's just an interactive way of, um, of doing that. And that's where it's generated from. Uh, if you think you should, uh, or a comment should be available to you, but it isn't for some reason, then you might need to um, enter the enable command. So by default, you're just in a user mode. And if you enter enable, then you're in privileged mode. The prompt changes and you have access to some more commands that are considered uh, potentially dangerous. Okay, and... Uh, I'll also show a little bit more, or show the VTY interface a little bit more in, in a bit. So just, this is basically, 
how it looks if you want you know, for information. So say show network and it'll show you show you um, what type of network it is, um, encryption on off the channel load. So that's useful to see whether all traffic channels are actually in use if you have problems and if all are in use then uh, it's quite obvious why you can't open another call um, some such there's also show lchan or other commands after show which obviously show you stuff uh, so give you information about the system um, that you can use uh, if channels are in in a broken state or what what their state is and uh, also open channels. If we get measurement reports from phones, then that'll the latest measurement report will show up there as well. Um, so uh, quite useful to debug a running system. It's just minimal logging example. You log into the VTY. This is uh, Osmonit based, so it's the port uh, 4242. And then you say logging enable, logging filter all, logging level all debug, and it'll just print lots of messages. And of course, if you have a specific problem in a specific area, you might not want all categories, but um, the categories vary also with Osmo NitBay has others than Osmo SGSN. Um, so you can hit uh, tab as well after logging level and then see what kind of categories you, you actually want to enable. Um, GSM tap is is a neat way for the BTS or for Osmo BTS to send uh, all the communication that is ongoing on the UM, so on the radio interface, to also send that um, to the network so we can capture it. So there's a GSM tap header which um, has the information that the actual message is missing. So what RFCN are we sending on? Is it uplink, downlink? Um, what is the the GSM frame number? What is the the logical channel, um, the LCHAN, and so on and so forth? And then the actual message that was either received by the BTS on the radio interface or sent out. So um, enabling GSM tap, you can basically trace all the RF um, communication that is ongoing. And in Osmo BTS, you can use GSM tap minus uh, SAPI to, or no GSM tap SAPI to disable it. Um, so you can enable certain channels uh, selectively. So here it's the broadcast control channel, the access grant channel where the BTS grants uh, access to an MS. Um, the slow associated control channel and uh, the other wasn't slow, it was standalone dedicated control channel, something like that. Um, and yeah, there again you have the packet channel or traffic channel that you can um, enable as well, depending on what you want to look at. Um, so when you have that uh, you can capture it uh, with TCP dump or just look at it in Wireshark directly in order for Wireshark. So a stock Wireshark should work and um, decode most, if not all of the stuff that, that you're going to encounter. So you don't need any patches, but you have to um, have some uh, configuration uh, for it to pick up um, all the, the dialects. So first is GPRS NS. Um, you have to add the port 23,000 there. You can also do that in the graphical user interface by going through the protocols and adding the things, but that's just, uh, so this is the easy part. Um, and then for the GSM, ABIS, OML, and RSL, so organization maintenance layer, which configures stuff and the, the radio signal <laughs> signaling messages, we want to use the IP, IP access dialect. Um, otherwise, some messages are not um, decoded correctly. Um, yes, and then with Wireshark, uh, well, first we'll look at it in, in a second, but with Wireshark, you'll uh, have lots of messages that probably don't interest you. 
and uh, so do you use filters to filter out the noise and colorize interesting packets and I'll show you how that works in a second. Um, the command line is quite quite nice, quite useful. I don't know where it originally came from, if Hogger made it up or... I know he showed me. Um, so you use Wireshark uh, that captures on the interface standard input and then you spawn a shell and SSH to the actual BTS where you run TCP dump that uh, well, uses unbuffered mode for, for standard out, captures on the local interface and writes it to standard out so you can have a remote Wireshark, which is um, yeah, quite nice for live debugging. And then, yeah, the last two um, parts I forgot to say, GSM tab sends uh, um, its messages to UDP port 4729. Uh, so with this command, you would just filter out the GSM tab traffic. You can, of course, also um, capture just everything or just capture the, the ABIS part of the communication. Okay, let's see. Basically, the problem or the problem you're working around here is, um, is if you run all the software inside one embedded device where you don't have a screen and all the communication happens over loopback, how do you get that communication out of the box? And that's basically one possible solution to that problem. So, yeah, uh, just from earlier to show you, this is the col colored logs, so I don't have uh, the category. Um, Set so you have to just yeah use I, yeah okay okay so yeah so you can see here you have the the database uh, logs that fail to find oops okay. Um, maybe we don't want to show that. So it, it's again some SIM card that tried to register it wasn't. Um, it's not known to my HLR, so we rejected it. Um, okay. Uh, next. There, where shark? <coughs> okay, so this is. Yes, uh, so fun fact about Wireshark, you can use control plus and control minus uh, to, to change the size, which is quite nice. <laughs> um, so this was a trace I recorded um, two days ago. Um, basically, this is GSM tab, just one packet with GSM mtap header where we can see that's in time slot 7 that's where I configured the um, packet channel it's not an uplink packet it's a downlink packet uplink is 0 which means it's downlink in that RFCN we don't have any signal level or signal to noise ratio recorded here because it's downlink and it doesn't know it's the GSM frame number and uh, just gonna resize it so I actually see everything here um, so, so basically you can take a UM protocol trace without an actual uh, air interface sniffer. I mean, you could, you could of course use something like GPRS decode or, or air probe or something like that, but if you run the BTS yourself, why would you intercept the radio interface again if you can just have the BTS write you all those frames uh, that it receives and transmits? Yes. And... Um, so yeah, with different filters, you can filter out different stuff. So I just want to look at the GSM tab, which is all I'm seeing right now anyway. But um, I don't want to have any of the, the packet channels. So you can also just right click and say prepare or apply as filter and not select it. So I want GSM tab, all GSM tab packets and not no packet of type PACCH which then leads me to yeah some let's close the gsm tab header 
some, uh, yeah, this is a system information type, so this is just uh, um, the yeah, regular system information type that the BTS uh, broadcasts about its capabilities. And here we have LabDM from a phone which sends a detach indication um, and class mark change, GPS, suspension request. Um, what we can now also do is um, if we want to follow this Timsey, let's take this one. This one might be live. Uh, bit longer. So we have the location updating except we have this TIMC here and we want to basically follow this around or just highlight it so you can colorize it with a filter. Um, so now this um, packet is green and the next time it detaches just down here you can directly see that those are related to the same MC. Of course, if you um, once you have a periodic location update, the, the TIMSY will change and uh, it's not useful anymore, but for um, for some things that's, that's quite nice, quite useful. <coughs> also to follow around, um, you can uh, filter on the channel type and the sub-slot in order to just have one, one or follow the messages from one LCHAN around. Um, there's also this uh, colorization rule, uh, coloring rules in Wireshark that you can use. Um, as you can see up here for 3G, already have some rules that um, differentiate the circuit switched and the packet switched traffic. Um, and while the the other um, colorize with filter don't um, don't stay permanently. If you save this here, um, then you will have it after restart as well. <coughs> okay. Um, just for for completeness. So yeah, I mean, Wireshark also has um, auto completion. So if you're not sure. Um, if you don't know where the protocol is, uh, best try to prefix GSM and then see if, if it matches, but uh, then it will also tell you uh, what um, what kind of protocols are available. So and here is this the, basically the trace of the ABIS uh, interface. So we had the AIR interface and this is the ABIS interface between the BTS and the BSC, where um, Interestingly, the coloring rule still matches. Location update, except. And, oh well, yeah, lots of load indications. Again, we can filter those out uh, as well, but I think I'm running out of time. <coughs> so, apply as filter and not selected. So, use G GSM ABIS RSL, but no load. Um, so here's the detach indication, which basically is the, the ABIS part of the RF traffic that you have previously seen. Um, okay, so that was the short demo. Then I think Niels is going to talk uh, much more about this in his uh, infrastructure talk. But um, just for completeness, once you've found a bug, you want to report it. So try to be specific in your in your report. Uh, be deta uh, detailed. If you know how to reproduce it, that those are always the most valuable bugs because you can actually uh, debug it all the time and don't have to wait for the issue to appear. Uh, then again, it's not always easy to find the steps to reproduce it. Um, Attach all the logs that I showed you how to make the the pcap traces like everything you have uh, about the bug attach it to um, to the issue um, for logs or other stuff please provide screen dumps so every in, all the information in text format not in picture format so don't do any screenshots I mean it's <clears throat> we can read it yes but uh, it's much less pain. 
to have it in text. And it's faster as well. Search in text. <laughs> yeah, search. <laughs> and um, then also, the, yeah, the last thing is um, be specific with regards to, to the version. So the VTY has a command show version, which should show the current git commit that it was built from. But um, yeah, then again, if you test it yourself and you build it yourself, then please provide the ex exact version that you that you test it with. Or um, for open embedded installs, you can also do opkg list minus installed and then grab for all the the Osmo packages or just just attach the whole file so we can see what libraries were used, what exact versions, and yeah, are the Open embedded images sometimes also have, uh, it's not nice, but it's happening, also have um, patches attached or patches directly applied onto a Git source. So OPKG list installed might even be the more accurate version for, for whatever. Okay, so yes, that's the... URL you're probably all familiar with. If you, you want to report bugs, um, do you want to report any questions? Stupid questions are always good. There are no stupid questions, that's what I was told. <laughs> uh, let's hope it's right. Um, can uh, this really fun uh, protocol tracing thing with Wireshark be done uh, with any other Osmocom projects other than Osmo BTS? I think that was the... Um, what do you mean other? So the, uh, the, the non-GSM based Osmo... I'm sorry. Uh, I, I refer you. So, so you're getting kind of this wonderful, like you know, um, trace yes. of what's happening on the radio interface. Yes. Um, can that be done on, say, the interface that we, you'd see, like you know, the ABIS over IP or, or any of that? I, I'm just curious. I, I've never used it anywhere else. I well, might as well ask. ABIS over IP is what you're oh. seeing right now. So that's actually. This is not the radio. So no, no. ABIS is communicate. Well. It's everything in a box that's communicating from here to here. But um, it's basically the BTS talking to the BSC, or in our part, the Osmo NetB. And A would be the part from the BSC talking to the MSC. And we have, or Wireshark has dissectors for that as well. So th this is ABIS. This is, um, I mean, the IP addresses are both localhost because it's both running on the same thing, but... Um, you would see this trace. Uh, I told you the question was stupid. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, basically, you can you can look at the same messages on the radio interface using GSM tab. That also, of course only works if you have Osmo BTS. So if you use IP access or Ericsson, you don't have that clear. Um, and then you have the traffic at, on the ABIS side, and then now. With the upcoming A interface uh, between Osmo BSC and Osmo MSC, you can look at the traffic again on the A interface, and it's yeah, again yeah. going to be the same layer three message. So you see it basically appear at every step as it traverses. So right here, without all the filters, you have the um, you can see GSM tap message for the detach indication, which then is being so. This is yeah, just a UDP port um, four seven two nine with the GSM tab header. And here you can see it's um, in TCP. It's It has the IP access um, header using RSL and you have the detach indication in here. <laughs> so that is ABIS RSL. Yeah, and if you, well, if you look at the timestamps, you might even see... Uh well, I'm not quite sure if you yeah you, you can see how long the processing of the packet took place between the UM interface and the RSL side inside Osmo BTS, um, or is it? There, yeah, actually there. they are different, right? So you can yeah, see what's the, like how long it took to process that. Uh. <laughs> so um, I don't know if I, I do something wrong here or if it's intended. It's in within the enable logging, logging all one, logging level, global debug, blah, 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 type it a million times. But it seems that if I want to, say, see mobile management 
logging levels at debug level, then I also need to type uh, logging level all everything. Otherwise, if I set the global logging level to uh, something below the in specific logging level, then I don't see the lo logging level for the specific uh, facility that I have asked to see debug for. So, in a way, you have to turn off everything other than what you want to see if you want to use anything other than logging all logging level all debug what, and i i don't know if uh, no I, I think what it's it's a good point because it's confusing even uh to me and others at sysmacom um it's one of the thing things we've just uh learned to live with so logging level all all is not really a category but it's more or less uh I think it functions as a filter. So if you say logging level all notice, then no matter what category you have set to anything, it will only um, have, well, it will only print notice and above. And so what you want to do is you want to set logging level all debug, and then you probably want to set logging level MM D or DMM or whatever the category is called to debug as well, because, um, the debug category might actually not be set, might just be set to notice or to info. And um, logging level all doesn't change that. It just changes that whatever is sent inside these different categories, whether it actually is forwarded to the log or not. The specific thing for me is that I, I, I'm always having these annoying messages from the SMPP ping, the are you there message the the so it's okay. ca causing the terminal to scroll constantly and i like to turn them off but if i want to turn that off i actually need to turn you, everything off because you can't it would be nice if there was a you, command i know you this can is set logging level smpp uh, fatal and that would turn that yes, off yes but it doesn't unless i do <coughs> logging level all everything if i put logging I need if you if you want to just log one facility, you have to turn everything else off. I I, I don't. You, yes, that's okay. what that was. Yeah, yeah. But then you have to. So you have to. I, I mean, I use expect scripts at this point to just configure it every time. If I have different, you know, I want this level, I just you know do it. <laughs> So you're basically saying we should have a, um, a script language in the VTY so you can have your customized logging <laughs> configuration snippet that's stored uh, on the server? No, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it is, yeah, it is a bit confusing, but um, uh, I think the logging level all, um, probably you should have it on everything all the time. I think very few people would ever want to do anything else but have logging level all on everything. And then basically, then you only have the individual categories, the individual subsystems, and the logging level all is basically, it's just a, a, yeah, you just ignore it. So if you have a proposal how to change the the naming or the functionality, I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, indeed, there is a, there is a, yeah, 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 there is, and I think uh, Max did quite some work on it back there, and uh, in the end, I think everyone was confused. Um, <laughs> not because of Max's work. Anyway, so we're running out of time, so okay. we need to Thank switch you. over to um, to Niels uh, now on the reporting. Of